Hey, hey, good afternoon, chickadees. This is Grace coming to you from Chocotour with the Comfy Nest. I'm gonna do a little project here just for fun. Um, I'm gonna be using a cute pattern. This one's called the herringbone pattern. It's in um, size B, which is like the eight by, eight by 11, is it? Let's see, I think they say it's basically, it's like an eight and a half by 11. Yep, eight and a half by 11. I have another size B. This is the mask. I have not used this one yet. It's the fern four inch circle. I'm gonna use that one. Um, I'm gonna plug everything in before I get going. That'll give you a minute to all come on and find me. So that works out pretty good. I'm gonna plug my phone in and plug in my iPad so I don't lose any juice. Don't lose power while I'm working. And then let me just make sure that the live feed is working out, you guys. Make sure you say hello when you come on. I will choose some names to put in the prize basket today. Um, I'll probably be giving away a catalog today, so if you don't have one, let me know you want one and I'll make sure your name gets in for sure. Um, I think the prize basket is empty. Nope, there's one name in there. Um, I already pulled um, for a prize, so I'm getting ready to load it up again. So all month long we'll be loading that up and then I'll, um, at the end of the month or like once a month, I'll be pulling a name to send a little prize pack to. So that's how that works. Let me just get on my page. Hey, Denise. Hello, hello. What's up, buddy? Take hey, Karen. This chair. Can you what? Take this chair. For what, honey? That desk? Yep. Um, do you want a folding chair? That one's too high for that desk because these are stools. Yeah. Hold on, interruption. Um, why don't you take that wooden chair right there that my, my all my fabrics are on? Because that's a regular size chair. Make sense? Yep. Okay. Hey, Frankie, how are you? Hi, Don. My sons, my two boys, are just starting their online classwork today. And my son doesn't even have a desk in his room. So we, I put a folding, I have, you know, those plastic folding tables. And I put one in his room. So he's trying to find a chair so he has a place to sit and do his work throughout the day. So that was that interruption. So sorry. Hey, Cheryl. Good afternoon. Hello, Karen. All right, guys, if we hit 25 viewers, live viewers, you guys do this. If we hit 25, I'm going to put a name in. Um, anybody who wants a catalog who does not have a catalog for spring, summer, just type in catalog. I'll throw your name in, um, and then I'll be pulling one name for a catalog today, and then once a month I'll pull to send a, a bigger prize pack to somebody. I'm going to try to use this for four-inch circle mask. I've never done it before. I've seen it done, haven't tried it. You guys let me know if you have this one or if you've done it. This comes, the, the, the mask comes in also a square and a circle in the C, um, no, excuse me, size D transfer. Hold on, I'm gonna bend down here. I'll show them to you. I have them. I just haven't used them yet. So I thought I'm gonna try on the little one and then we'll, we'll graduate to the bigger ones. Okay, so you get a square, there's a circle, and then there's the little circle. We're gonna try it. We're gonna see how it goes. But before I go to the big one, let's do the little one. Thank you for sharing. Beth says, I don't have a catalog. Let me get your name in there. I gotta grab a pen probably so I can read this. We're looking in my little, where's my pen? There it is. All right, Beth, Miss Beth Jenkins, I'm gonna get your name in there. For a catalog. And what's today? The 23rd. Yesterday was my son's birthday. Hey, Vivian. Hello, hello. There's Lisa. Thank you for sharing. Thanks for sprinkling, sprinkling the love. Janet saying, I don't have a catalog. All right, Janet. I'll get your name in there. You guys, we're at 15 viewers. Once we hit that 25, I'll throw another random name in there. So make sure you say hello, because the only way I know that you're here, the only way you'll have a chance to win is if you say hello or tell me where you're coming from. Tell me if you've tried this mask before, um, because you can maybe give me some tips. I haven't tried it yet. I'll be trying it here for the first time with you. So I'm going to use the herringbone with the mask. The herringbone and the mask are both brand new, so I'm going to fuzz both of them. You're welcome, Miss Beth. You're welcome. All right, let me get. I do save my um, my plastic covers, and I do put. Even though I use books, I still put them back in their plastic cover if I can, because it has the name of them on there. And I don't know why that means something to me, but I think it does. All right, I'll get you down so you can see what I'm doing, and I need to just make sure I get the live up on my iPad here so I can read comments as they come in, because I like to chit chat with you guys while we're while I'm working. All right, there we go. If you're not in my VIP group, go ahead and jump in there. It's free as long as you're a customer. 
meaning not already a designer. If you're a designer, there's nothing in there that would be helpful to you. <laughs> but if you are a customer, you'll want to be in there because there's discounted bundles. And we just have a great time in there. A lot of really smart, creative people sharing their project ideas, which I love that part of it. Okay, here's our fuzzing cloth. It's really nappy on one side and it has a finer texture on the other side. Um, this is great for drying your board too when after you've washed it, but we use it to fuzz our transfers. And that basically means because these are adhesive, but they're reusable, the adhesive is really strong. So um, you want to fuzz them first because they're, they're also stretchy. And what the fuzz does is it protects the transfer from sticking too strongly on your surface and then not, you know, having trouble getting it off. If you guys saw me do my live the other day, my big one, I actually, that I fuzzed it several times and I still had to pull pretty strongly to get it off. All right, with the mask, you're gonna put down first the design that you want on your transfer. And so I'm going with the herringbone. So I'm gonna put the herringbone down. Is that what it's called, herringbone, right? I'm gonna put this one down first. I'm just gonna center it. I'm using the, oh, the Grayson, the nine by 12 Grayson board. This one is $19.99. We have three erasable 9x12s. Um, the one that I used for my bunny, well the one behind me that has the bunny on it, on it with a magnet, the, the magnetic erasable one, that one is um, $39.99. The, the one that I used for Cottontail, which is this thick chunky frame, this one's called the Sylvie. And this one is $24.99, I believe. And then this one, which I said is called the Grace, and it comes in either black or white frame. Um, this one is $19.99. So it's great. The company has lots of price points for us. Okay, so you put your design down that you want. Then you're going to go on top of that with your mask. I've never done this before, folks, so we're going to try it together. Let me flatten that out a little bit. So this one, if you're new to Chocotour, this is a great one to showcase the silk screen because all of this, all the stuff that's not teal is silk screen. So let me show that to you. I'm just gonna fuzz that one once. Um, so if you don't know what that is, it's like, it's like nylons. It's not quite as stretchy. It's stretchy on the bias. So this way is not stretchy, but if I pull it diagonally, it is stretchy. And so when you're working with them, you always want to pull, not corner to corner, but you want to pull it straight. And I usually give you guys that tip too. But what we want to do is we want to, I usually just float it lightly over the place where I want it. And then I, interesting. So there's still going to be a little border around the herringbone. Oh, I see. It covers, it's making sure to cover the whole spot. So I'm going to start from the middle and I'm gonna press down on the circle, and then I'm gonna go and press down on all the borders to make sure that they're straight, and we wanna make sure there's no bubbles, so. Okay, so we wanna make sure it's straight and no bubbles, that's the goal. Now, what's happening here is, I have the herringbone. What this is gonna allow me to do is to create an open circle in the middle of the herringbone so that I can put something in the middle. Okay, so all of this is open silk screen. It's gonna capture the herringbone underneath. Um, the way they say, I'm gonna put this at a diagonal so you guys can see it better. The way that Chocotour tells us to do this, the best way to do this, they say, is to put the paste around the middle and then pull your paste out until your whole thing is covered. Rather than going straight down Put the paste in the middle and pull out, if that makes sense. So, check comments real quick and I'm gonna get my paste while I'm checking comments. Let's see, anybody more comments? Cheryl says, I got my little package today. Isn't it fun to get happy mail? I'm telling you, it's so much more fun. I was thinking for this to either do a neutral herringbone, like this is called iced coffee, but I'm a huge fan of co colors. So this blue is a gorgeous, um, it's called Ocean Mist, and it's what I used on the bunny. 
I'll show you again. Every time I touch this wall behind me, I'm afraid something's gonna come crashing down. This is that blue. So I think I'm gonna use that for the herringbone and then do something really bright in the middle. I've never done this before. Hey, Tony. Tony, have you used the masks before? I have never, so I will admit I'm a bit nervous. Like, oh, I hope it goes okay. I'm gonna do exactly what they tell us to do, which is to put the paste in the middle and then pull it out. And then you pick up both transfers at the same time. Um, first, I gotta, I gotta mix this because the colors, they're, they've come you know, apart a little bit because it hasn't been used, it hasn't been stirred in a while. So they've separated a little bit, kind of like oil and vinegar. You wanna get in there and give it a good stir to separate all that paste again. Now I could use my stir stick to spread the paste and then I need a squeegee. So I'm gonna go with just a small squeegee to pull the paste out in a way. All right, that's the goal, let's try. So I'm gonna place it on. I don't need it on the circle, I need it on the herringbone around the circle, like that. So I have plenty of it. I can pick up any of the excess and put it back in my pot. I know that looks like a lot, it is a lot. It's more, way more than I need. So now what I wanna do is I wanna spread it in one direction going out and try, I think the goal is to just try to pull once instead of continuously, because you got two layers of design here. I didn't have enough paste to finish the bottom there. 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 I think I'm gonna turn the board around as I go. Like I'll, I'll just, like it's on a Lazy Susan. That would be the easiest way to do this. I don't wanna pick up the excess. See all that extra? <laughs> I ended up just spreading it. I'll have to turn the board. I have a, um, a rag underneath my board because the board comes with hanging hardware, like hooks on two sides, one for horizontal hanging and one for vertical. And um, I just don't want it to scratch my table. Plus it makes the board move around, you know, like wiggle more because there's two raised parts on the back. So it makes it wiggle and I don't want it to wiggle while I'm doing my project. That's why I put a rag underneath it. So when you're doing this, I imagine it's best to do it with a paste that, um, has a really good consistency. You don't want a dry paste. You don't want a paste that's too wet. So if you're working with your pots of paste and you've had to add water to one, so it's a little wetter than the others, I would say leave it open for a little while on the counter. Just leave it open, leave it alone so it dries a little. Like literally, the, what it's gonna do is, just like you wanna close your paint jar because you don't want it to dry out. Um, if it's too wet, you do want it to dry out a little bit. So leave it on the counter and you can let it dry out a little and then give it a stir, but you don't want a, a paste that's too wet when you do this. All right, I'm pulling both corners up at the same time. You wanna do both. And like I said, pull all at once. Don't pull corner to corner. Two hands on each corner and we're gonna pull them together. <gasps> that's brilliant, look at that. It works. First time doing it, you guys. Whoa, check that out. That is so clever. So now we can let this dry and I've got to put some, we're gonna put something in the middle and I actually, I haven't picked something yet. What do you think guys? Tell me what you think of that. Tony says she hasn't used one yet, but she did order one. Helen, thank you. I hope things are good for you and your family too. Yeah, we're okay. We're doing okay. A little bit of a transition here, I think with the school being online for my boys. Um, I think that one of them, I know he was a little overwhelmed today, um, but I keep reminding them, you know, this is new for the teachers. It's new for the principal. It's new for the students. It's new for everybody. This like nobody has a an advantage here on him. <laughs> he can be um, very he has high expectations for himself and his schoolwork. And I think he was feeling like things weren't going well. And I said, just you know what? I told him, everybody's in the same boat here and we're all learning at the same time. So I said, just call the school and ask your teacher. He wasn't sure about something. I said, just call and ask. It's just gonna be a lot of that right now, right? And it's okay, Like it's like everything else. Um, for all of us, there's just a lot of new things right now that we've never experienced before, our generation anyway. Um, my dad died a few years ago, but if he was alive, he probably could tell some stories about waiting in lines during the depression. Um, in the 20s when he was a boy, 
they, you know, that older generation would have experienced something like that. Like I see the pictures of people at Walgreens with their, you know, the X on the floor and they're staying six feet apart to try to get just some basics for their home. Yeah, yeah, it's different and it's goofy and you know what, everybody's in the same boat. So when I think of that, I think, you know what, I don't have an advantage over them. They don't have an advantage over me. We're all in it together. I know, isn't this cool? I hear a lot of, I love it. Right? So this, again, this, it has hardware to hang vertically or horizontally. So you could position it either way, depending on what you want to put on it. So I haven't decided what to put in the middle. I pulled out my books. I thought maybe you guys could help me. Um, what I think, let me hang this back up. Uh, don't, I'm always so afraid something's going to fall. I'm going to grab my books because I have my three inch transfers in here. My little minis, my singles. Um, yeah, Lisa, so I'm pretty sure we're going to be closed for the rest of the year. We picked up all their locker contents. We picked up their instruments today. They're doing even music and voice choir. They're doing it from home. So I give our, our teachers and staff such kudos, such accolades for all the work they've been doing because they're working really hard. <laughs> this is all new to all of them as much as it is for us. Okay, so the bumblebee is an option because the bumblebee just fits and I believe the bee's wings would go over, it would overlap on the on the circle, but I'm gonna pull that one out because that's a good option. Um, I'm going through, like, all, this is how I store mine. And these books are in my Amazon store if you're, if you would like to do the portfolio books. These cupcakes, for sure, one of them would fit, but I have no reason to have a cupcake in there right now. Um, I'm going and I'm looking through some of my design elements. So these ones, these are the three inches and these ones were called Explore More. And they were all like about adventure, like wander, explore more, say yes to new adventures. That would be cute. That would be a cute little message for our house. <laughs> say yes to new adventures. Wild and free, hashtag outside. This one says adventure vibes. This one says happy camper. That one's a cute one. Let's get lost. I like the happy camper. And I like say yes to adventures. That would be cute. So we got two other possibilities here. All right. So that's an idea. I'm going to just stick this out a little, kind of like a bookmark, so that I remember that that might be a good option. So I'm flipping through because I want to look for my other littles, my other... Christmas or Easter time, those might work, but it's, or <laughs> Halloween, I should say. Look, we've got snowflakes that would fit in there. So we have all these different little elements, design elements that you can pull from anywhere. You could put your, your family's initial, like I could just put a K in there. This one is Beach Day. This is from last summer. Let's sail away Rue de la Mor. I don't know what that means. Hang loose, that one's cute. Sun, please. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. In North Dakota, Tony can attest to this. We don't get a whole lot of sun, although it's sunny. On, you know, today is really good. Go, go, go. Wander, lust. There's just a simple flower. USA, vacay. All right. <laughs> the sun, please. That's cute. And then, oh yes, I have all these, the farmhouse ones. See, this is the way I like to store them, you guys. Before I started putting them on backing sheets, like this, I was storing them. I would cut them on their backing sheet and store them in the bag, but then you can't see what you have, right? So here, here's one of the backing sheets. I just I just took off those two brand new, new uh, transfers. This is what I prefer because then when I'm going through my book, I can see all of them at once and I keep the cellophane that has the name of the transfer on it. So I know the name of it. That kind of gives me an idea of when I got it. And the reason, you know, you don't need to know all that. I guess I am a little bit more conscientious about knowing that because as a designer, if somebody asks a question, I want to have some clues <laughs> to help me find the answer. But I like storing my transfers like this. I'm moving all of my transfers over from being stored like this to being stored like this. It makes it so much easier. So where's the other... So you can buy these on my chalk store, in my chalk store, my chalk site. You can buy them. I think you get a pack of 10 for like 
$3.99 or something. So it's totally worth it as far as I'm concerned. And you can space them as close or as far apart as you want to. I like to just make it easy on me so I don't have to worry about fitting them on there exactly, right? And now I can see them all really nicely. Usually for a set of, oh, <laughs> I did the wrong way. The set of minis, it usually takes two eight and a half by 11 sheets to store all the minis for one set because they come with 12. So there, now my minis, I can see them really clearly. So back to back, I'll put them back in their sheet. Oh, I didn't save the sheet for this one. But now let's see, this one I had already started storing that way, the farmhouse ones, so let's look at these. Simple living, grown locally, farmer's market, fresh eggs, it's on this sheet. Farm, sweet farm, baked fresh, grateful, thankful, blessed. Nah, don't feel like any of those. <laughs> nah, I don't wanna, you can't make me. Actually, it's probably better to storm this way and get a little peek at them. So that's the nice thing about having these sheets, you guys. It just makes it so much easier to handle them that way than on all these little sheets. So I just throw those out because just not needed. All right, I'm thinking either the bumblebee, or what was the other one I had held over here? I have to decide now, happy camper or bumblebee? You guys wanna vote? Should I put happy camper in the middle or the bumblebee? Karen says, oh, my dad also here would be sip worried right now. Oh, sure, she says, oh, I'm sorry you lost him in July. I'm sorry, Karen. Ellen votes for the bee. The bee is gorgeous, I love it. And this was in, I don't know if it's still there, I'd have to look myself, but this set, it says, um, you know, you get the bee and it says humble and kind. See, I have to put these on my eight and a half by 11 sheets. Hive rules, it has a little crown for the bee queen bee and then you get the um the, what are they called honeycombs this set was in the last chance section on my chalk site for a while um i don't know if it's sold out yet but i like the bee too ellen's voting for the bee and the hope that summer's coming soon nancy oh i think tony said use the bee <laughs> helen says the bee nancy says i like the bee Tracy's voting happy camper. Nancy says the bee. Okay, let's go with the bee. I, it's going to overlap a little, but we can make this work. We can do it. All right, here's our board. I got my little rag there to keep my table from getting too scratched and keeping this from wobbling too much. Here's my bee. I need to make sure this is dry. The way I, I don't rub when I check, I just push my fingers down. And if nothing comes up, you know it's dry. And you know what? I've got ocean mist on my fingers, so it's hard to see. I don't have it on my palms, though. <laughs> no, nothing's coming up. Okay. This bee is going to be a little big on here, but I still think it'll be really cute. If I put the bee here, now I'm just seeing what I can fit. You have, actually, a border all the way around. I could put bee happy like all the way around on it like that in the border. That would be cute too. Or I could put the bee happy right above the bee, which I think is what I'm going to do. So he's definitely going to overlap a little bit. I'm going to put him or her, you can put a crown on her if you want. I'm going to put her wonky because that's the way I like it. You could do her straight on if you want. I like things wonky. And I'm going to put her as close to the bottom as I can so that I have room for bee happy. I'm not, I'm not pressing on the out, outside edges if I don't have to. I'm just pressing on the part that is the silk screen where the paste is going to go through. I have two yellows because I was kind of thinking the B too. Um, I have a lighter yellow and I have this really bold yellow. This one's called Bumblebee. Yes, yes. And this one's called Daffodil. So that's the difference between them. And I think I'm going to go with Bumblebee because it seems like the right color. Let's hope it's the right consistency. It's looking like it's getting dry. Okay, like I said, when they start to get dry, and this never happens to the shimmers. It just, I don't know what it is about the shimmers, the formula of the shimmers, but they don't get dry. But your other ones will get a little dry. There's nothing to worry about. You just add distilled water, which you can get, I get a gallon of it over where the regular spring water is. It's I get a gallon of it next to the gallons of spring water at the grocery store or at Walmart or wherever you're getting water. So you're just gonna give that a good mix. 
and I love my little stirring stick. It's actually called a multi-tool because you can do little, um, little details with this. You can chalk with this or you can stir with it. So I do love that little tool. I'm going to go in with a little mini squeegee. This is the one that I include. Um, all the people who join my membership club get this when they join. Um, it also is an almost every single one of the discounted bundles I offer in the VIP group. Okay, I'm just going to do the B. I'm going to do the whole thing yellow, this bumblebee yellow, and then I'm going to do the words, um, and we'll, we'll decide whether to do the words in a different color, but let's get this done first, and then we're going to need time to, for this to dry so that I can I can do the other part. All right, pick up your excess, put it back in your pot. I love that it's so scratchy looking, and I love the detail on the wings. Um, now my antennas didn't come out. The antennas dropped, look at it. It's the, the um, what do you call it? The paste stayed in the silk screen right there. You can see it. It's still inside the silk screen. That's, if that, that means it dried in the silk screen before I picked it up. Not a problem. What I'm gonna do, the solution I've found to this, if I have just one little line like that that needs to be filled in, the way I've, I did this the other day on the live, I don't know if you guys saw me, but I'm gonna take my paste with a stirring stick, which is just very, very thin. I'm gonna wet it with my paste, and actually I'm gonna use the cap to spread this out a little bit. And I'm gonna dip my paste so that it's on the edge, and I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna put it down where that where that should be. And it's it's just gonna dab a little color. It's not going to, I'm not painting it on. I'm just kind of pressing it on, I guess is the goal. I need more paste, I didn't have enough there. So I can fill it in. And this is nice, because it's a nice straight line, and a straight line is what I need. Now, if there was a section that was like a circle that needed to be filled in, something deeper, wider, I would use a paintbrush. And just, you can go in and just paint right in there. I'll show you actually. Um, let me put that away. Let me get a detailed paintbrush. So if you grabbed a paintbrush that had a really fine tip and you needed to fill something in or draw it in, you could take, see this is it. My paint is just a little, my paste is a little bit dry. So you could wet your pa paintbrush with some of that paste and if you needed to fill something in, and no one's going to know the difference because this is a really scratchy design anyway, if I wanted to make the wings more noticeable, you can go ahead and paint. I'm gonna paint right over the blue, the ocean mist, to make the bumblebee show up more. Okay, see how, this is how I did um, that Choose Happy watercolor. I filled in the flowers with paste using a little paintbrush. So it's just gonna give my bumblebee's wings a little more attention because they're Instead of having the black showing up, we're gonna have more yellow showing, if that makes sense. So you can have some fun with your paste. You don't have to just use your squeegees. Feel free to grab your paint brushes and fill in more paste. I'm gonna put a couple of little lines in here. Look, cause you know how wings usually have veins in them? Which I don't know anything about bugs. I don't know how that works or why they have them, but. I'm just gonna go fill it in. So it's just adding more color. So if you ever have something that didn't, the paste didn't go through, don't be afraid to grab another tool. First I used the stirring stick and then I used a fine tip, uh, detailed paintbrush. Don't be afraid to do that. Hey you guys, if we hit 25, hey Patty from Clinton, Wisconsin. How do you find my Amazon store? Karen, I will send you the link if you just remind me, it's just, Amazon.com slash the comfy nest shop slash shop slash the comfy nest, but I can send it to you for sure. In fact, I wonder if I would even be able to find it for you right now. I will try real quick. Yep, I found it. Hang tight, I'll get you a link right now. That'll just be so much easier. Share this page, share. Copy. I was like, okay, eventually you do you do start understanding how to do all this stuff. I'm gonna to try to put it right in the in the um comments here for you guys. So thank you for asking that question. Hopefully that works. 
All right, so I'm gonna try that link and tell me if it works. It's a really big, long one, and it normally doesn't look that ugly. Let me just try one more thing. Since you're asking the question, I'm gonna to try to shorten it up, because usually it's just shop slash the comfy nest without all those references. So let me try that one. You can try either one of those, hopefully should work. Thank you for sharing, Miss Tony. All right, so now we need to let that dry, but I'm hoping to get Be Happy on here. And I left enough room above the bee to put this word on here. But I do want to make sure this is dry before I go ahead and do that. I'm going to take my hair dryer to it. I can check comments while I'm doing it. Have we hit 25? Once we hit 25, I'll put some more names. <laughs> so beautiful. Cute, Ellen. Oh, good. I'm glad it works. You can go into my craft supplies that you'll love um, to look for some of my supplies like my crap these mats that there's an eight and a half by eleven and a really big one in there all kinds of stuff in there the stuff that I love let's get this dry and then we'll try to put the rest of it on here all right let's see if it's dry sometimes I'm afraid to go in because I was painting it on there pretty thick no it actually feels pretty good all right we're gonna put be happy I'm gonna put it wonky so that it's not exactly in the same direction as the B. So it's gonna go the other way. All right. I clearly need to add a little more water to my yellow paste, my bumblebee paste, because it's rather, it's rather thick. And if it dried so quickly that some of my design came up with the transfer, that means it's too thick. I need to thin it out a little bit more with some more distilled water. Cuteness alert, right? You guys, how stinking cute. I love that little bee. I really do. Okay, so now I could do something to create, like just make this even more cute. Let's try, let's see. I've got some ribbon over here. Oh, here's my memory game that I did the other day. I still have these here, you guys. That cute memory game. Let's see, I have some really cute ribbon over here. Um, I don't know, that's too much with a herringbone, but pink and green with yellow, does that work? This green definitely works. I put my, um, I pulled these out earlier for the kids' crafts and then I didn't end up using them. Let's see, I'm gonna put this aside. We're gonna make a little, we'll make a little bow. I can put all this aside, we'll make a little bow. Cause bows are make, oh, you always make everything pretty, right? These um, transfer trimmers, super sharp. They're awesome for this kind of stuff. I want the bow to sit like just in the center here. So I don't want it to be any bigger than that. So let's just cut some pieces and see what we get. I feel like I should have some other colors though. I have this dark green. We could put that in there too. You guys, I have two huge... <laughs> The really big, um, what do you call them? Rubbermaid totes with, when I say more ribbon, I have two big Rubbermaid totes. I'm gonna use my craft scissors um, that are full, just full of ribbon. So when I say, oh, I think I have a little more ribbon here, like go ahead, laugh at me because I have enough ribbon to supply the whole state probably for the whole coronavirus hunkered in for the... <laughs> The length of it. I actually like these greens together with that pink. All right, and then one of these. So I usually just do offset of colors. So I have three different colors here. And this is how I do it. You guys, you know, I have actually two different ways I do bows. This one I want to be a flat bow. I don't want it to be really big. So I like to, you've probably seen people do them this way, right? So you're just gonna offset them. Oh, I don't like the way that that edge is. It's not big enough. Not the, the, the angle wasn't strong enough for me. You can actually stay on the same path so that you can see your middle really well um, if you want to. I feel like I need more ribbon. Like I need, I definitely need more ribbon. Oh, we have 30. All right, let's put some names on. Karen says, now 30. I see the little emoji. I'm like, oh man, I didn't even realize we hit that. I'm gonna add another name. So I'm gonna pull randomly from the comments. So if you have not said hello, 
make sure you, at the very least you say hello and where you're coming in from because that's where I'm going to get the names to put in the drawing to win happy mail from the comfy nest. Hey, Linda. All right. So I'm going to scroll through and just pick a name and that person's name is going to go in. So Sia Holler, your name is going in. Yours was the first that I saw. So Sia Holler is watching. So Sia on 323. I'm going to put your name in there. If we hit, now just keep telling me if we hit another, like say, let's say if we get to 50, I'll put another name in there. So you guys keep doing this. I'm going to grab some more ribbon. I'm not leaving the room. I'm just ri stepping on the other side of my desk so I can grab some other ribbon. Because I have, I'm not kidding you, two big bins. I'll show you two big bins of ribbon. <laughs> I am not kidding when I say that. Oh my gosh, I'll put the camera up. Am I, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one who has this much ribbon in their life. I have two of these full, right? I tried to organize them the other day and I put them all like in stacks so that I could see them easily and then know where in the bin I want to reach. Ooh, that one's really cute. I got a cute yellow right there. But then the whole stack, the whole bin fell over. I took about 15 minutes to stack them all in there nicely. And then it fell off the tape, like off the chair that I was working on. I was so mad. I was so mad. I'm like, good gravy. Help a girl, help a sister out. I'm trying to be organized here. That's cute. Kind of goes with the herringbone. Let's add that in there. What else do we got in our bag of tricks here? Don't need. Look at, there's all my lace. You guys, are you like me? You have like just, this is like an, in, an insider's look at my messy craft room. The other thing I do, so I have all my spools of ribbon. That one matches the little one. Cute. Um, I have all my spools, but then on top of that, I also, hold on, I'm fixing. I also have, oh, that one's too bright. Orange, I don't like it. Um, I also have a bag ooh, that I wedged in here. And this has like, this is mostly scraps. So if I cut a ribbon and then I had an extra piece, it goes in here because you never know, right? Like, you never know. Oh, I love this stuff, too. That's yellow. That might be cute to put in there. What's that called? Rip, rip wrap? Is that what it's called? I think that's what it's called. So anytime I have, like, just a bit, it's not a full spool. It's just a little bit. It goes in this big bag, and then I, I do dig through it before. Like, oh, I just need one more little color. And you can just dig in there and get what you need. Okay. I think with these other two yellows, we're gonna hit the jackpot. So I got some pink in there, which is gonna be weird. Buffalo, 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 <laughs> she says. I think the buffalo plaid's gonna be too busy with the herringbone, that's my worry there. Okay, so I've got the two greens. I'm gonna separate these now because now I have some more colors to put in. And I actually, I might take out the pink. And I love this, this is super fun. So let's do a little bit of this. You wouldn't think, but yes. And I'm not going to stack them all, since I'm going to come up with more colors, I'm not going to stack them all the same. All right, so that little piece will go back in that bag, because I can use that some other time. I'm, I'm not going to just do yellow on top of yellow. I'm going to try to offset them a little bit. Here we got some wide. What is this? Now, does this have a name? It's just like a zigzag, but it most rem uh, resembles the herringbone to me. Okay, the painter's tape is taking the paint off of the ribbon. Just so you know, I've never noticed that before. That's the first time I noticed that. And it's not a big deal, but if you don't want your ribbon to have marks on it, you want it to stay absolutely perfect, don't put painter's tape on it. So there, we li live and learn, don't we? I uh, usually use little pins, but my sewing stuff was all still in bins downstairs from when we moved two years ago. I haven't used it in that long. I did dig it out, you guys. I created my first mask last night. I have to put the, the elastics on it yet. Um, but there's a plea um, for some friends in on the East Coast for masks for um, hospital staff. So if anybody's a sewer and you want to help out with that, private message me, please. Because I'm, I'm going to put out a plea for people to do maybe five masks. And I'll give you... I'll send you a video of instructions um, that I found of the, the the version that I'm doing. They're going to be putting filters in them, so we need to leave an opening for their filters. Okay, 
I'm gonna do yellow and greens and I've got the wide and I'm gonna use the skinny of this, I don't know what you call it, zigzag. All right, so let's put this away. See, I usually use just the pins in there work really, really well. But I must have, when I opened that yellow, I must not have had any pins handy. <laughs> All right, the pink I'm not gonna use. That's gonna go back in my little bag. All right, so I am gonna offset them differently than doing one right on top of the other. So the, the wide ones I always put on the toward the bottom so that you can see them, but I'm just gonna offset colors just here and there. So I'm not gonna make them perfectly matching. Okay, do you see what I'm doing? I'll put this wide one. Actually, I'm gonna have that wide one go that way. So let's do the skinny one next. The wide one going this way. There's no, I don't want that. I don't want this on top. I want it peeking through, but I don't want it on top. So I'm gonna make sure I end up, um, let's see, what if I did this one here, this one here, this one there. I don't want it competing too much with my herringbone on my, my thing there. So now, um, if you have this couple of ways you can do this, um, this seems to be the easiest way to do this, right? Um, to tie this together now. So if you took, oh, and there's a little piece. That's exactly what I was looking for. Scrunch this up in the middle. So it kind of looks like you're like a bow tie kind of in the middle. And then you need to get something in the middle. I've used jute rope. You can use a bread tie. You can use your um, pipe cleaner to tie this off in the middle. I don't like the black, but don't worry. We're going to fix that. I'm going to actually cut this really close to the middle. Like right, I'm going to cut off all the tail of that. And then we can, we can, we're going to wiggle these around left and right to make sure that they get exactly the way we want them. I'm going to use the, oh, I'm going to use the light green. So I got, I did that to make sure it held together. And then you can come back in with another color ribbon. Let me turn on my hot glue gun. And we're going to use, we're going to hot glue this on top of my black, because I don't want that black showing. Okay, so I'm gonna put these tails that I, I cut off the tail, but I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna wrap it around so it's in line with the rest of it. I'm gonna hot glue this in place here so that it covers that middle, and then we're gonna play with that. I'm gonna, I'm going to just, I'm not gonna hot glue this onto my board because I don't want it permanent. I'm gonna use, um, you guys know I use my glue dots. So let me get my glue dots out. This is just gonna, um, make it a little more decorative, right? Because it has something else on it. I'm looking for my big glue dots. Those are minis. That's not what I want. Let's use the medium ones. Sometimes I'm organized. Sometimes. Let's see, where are we? You're welcome, Donna. She said thanks for the ideas. You're welcome. All right, let's see. Supposedly, my new glue gun, which is cordless, um, it stays, you know, the cord is close enough to my table that I don't need to take it off the cord, but it is cordless. It's supposed to just be 90 seconds to heat it up. That's the way it's supposed to work. I just got it, so I'm, I'm kind of excited to keep trying it. All right, so I just want this to go far enough to cover my black piping. That's all I need is this to be wide enough to cover the black piping so I can cut it at the point I think I'm gonna cut it straight. I've been cutting it at diagonal, but if I wanna cut it straight, then I'll have a straight line in the back. So the diagonal that I had on the end there, no problem, I'm gonna tuck that under, and then I'm gonna put a piece of, or a piece, I'm gonna put a dab of glue here. Nope, not, not ready yet, yes it is, here we go. It's just not, it's not like flowing really easily but I could get it out of there, let's say that. So I wanna, I want to, ooh, ouch. Press that down, let's hope that holds. I don't know if it was hot enough, yeah it was. All right, so now it looks more like, more finished, right? So let me get my board and we're gonna start playing with this and try to get it. My board is like underneath my bag of ribbon, which is underneath the cover to the box of ribbons. I got all kinds of stuff here. So my little be happy, I could stick this up here just to dress it up some more. I'm gonna use the glue dots. I'll show you how to do that in a minute, but I do like to 
monkey with these a little bit to separate them out a little more so you can see the different colors. So now that it's like tied together with that, with that pipe cleaner, like I want one of these squiggly yellows to be to the bottom and I want one to the top. So if you want one of your thick patterns to go up to the top, you want one to go to the bottom. You kind of want to separate them so that you have, so that they're splayed out and they're not all in the same direction. The two, you don't want two of the yellows in the same direction. You want one to the top and one to the bottom. Now that was not on the top. I think I got turned around here. Here's my top. Gosh, I did such a dang good glue job, you guys, that I, I, I don't like, I think I had it on its side. I, I couldn't tell where my top was and where my bottom was. The only reason I knew is because of where the positioning of the, the zigzag ribbon was. But you get the idea. So you're just gonna pull them until they're kind of all going in different directions. Then you can, this is starting to fray a little bit because I'm touching it so much. If you're afraid of that, just put a little bead of glue there. Don't use your fingers. Find something plastic, like I have these little plastic palette knives to push your glue down. Just You just wanna coat your um, fabric so that it it's, shouldn't budge really. But no one's really gonna be playing with it and touching it and handling it once it's on your project. So I've got my medium glue dots. Looks like I have two, three on here and that would be just enough. So I'm gonna put one in the back. And then what I usually do, I put one in the back, put that on my chalkboard, it'll come right off when I'm ready for it to come off. Then I will sometimes, I'll um, take the other strips of ribbon and maybe I want, you know, if I, if I hold it up and, I, and it's not staying in the position that I want it to, if I hold it up like this, like it's gonna be propped on my, oh, it's staying perfectly. But if, if say these were drooping down in a way that I didn't want them to, you can then take your little glue dot and put it on the back of your ribbon and then just stick it to your frame. Like if you wanted it to stay that high, but it's staying, I don't really need to. It's kind of staying in place. I think it's staying in place so well because I twisted that, um, oh, <laughs> glue dot on my finger. I twisted the, pipe cleaner so tightly that they're not, once you get, once you pull them into the place that you want them, they basically stay. But if you have a ribbon or a, a bow or something that's not staying in place, the glue dots work great on your boards because it'll come right off, especially if you use not the permanent ones, but the, the temporary ones. There are some that are meant for permanent use and some that aren't, but that just, look at it, it's even moving a little on me but that just makes it a little more dressy. And I like the yellow with the green because it just adds another color. I love playing with like the bows and the ribbons to get them super cute. You know who's really good at that? Bows and ribbons. Um, I took a class that 4-H did in the winter. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I did the Christmas. They had like a Christmas, it was like a greenery thing that you got to decorate and you get to make the pot yourself to put outside on your porch. And the florist that was there was so good at making bows. Florists are incredible at it. They're really good at it. <laughs> yep, so there you go. When all else fails, lady, you can buy bows that are already made. All of the B screens are awesome. I think they are too, Becky. Yeah, I love it too, Colleen. Thank you. Right, it's just cute. What a good little reminder right now. So Tony says the B, because spring is coming and summer is coming shortly after that. It's also just a really good message right now, right? I did a cute little craft with the kids this morning. It was silly. Oh, it's up here. Silly little kids craft up there, my little love heart, because the all the hearts movement where everybody's putting hearts in their windows to kind of show love and solidarity and community. That was my little version of it that I was trying to show them different ways they could create hearts for their windows. The bee is perfect. Thank you, Nancy. It's so bright. That's that color bumblebee. Let me show you one more time because I know not all of you have a huge collection of colors and you're sometimes wondering like, oh, how much different is that color from that color? I love to do this for you. So this one is daffodil, very soft pastel color. This one's bumblebee. It's a lot deeper color. You can see the difference. And then we also have the papaya, which is like a really mustardy yellow. Hold on, I'll grab it just so you can see the difference. Because it is very different. Oh, nope, this one's curry. This one's curry. I don't know where my papaya is. Oh, it's up there too, that's more orangey. This one's curry, more of a mustardy yellow. Good for fall time. 
All right, you guys, thanks for joining me. If you haven't joined the VIP group, go ahead and do that. I'm going to pull a name here. There are a couple of names for catalogs. I have like three names in here. Um, <laughs> thank you. Lisa says cute. Tracy says adorable. I'm so glad. I'm glad you think so. You're welcome, Tony, for doing a live. I'm going to pull a name. Actually, there are two names in here, three names. Two of them wanted a catalog. So Sia, I know, has a catalog. I gave her one. So I'm just going to pull Beth. Was it Beth and Janet? Beth and Janet, I'll send you both a catalog if you don't have one already. Do me a favor, Beth. I know I have your address, but Janet, do I have your address? Can you private message me your address and your email address? I'll send you both a catalog. I am going to put your names back in for the big, big drawing, for the monthly drawing. But that was for today for just for catalogs. Thank you. This is a Target hat. Thanks for saying that. Donna, I appreciate that. All right, you guys, join the VIP group if you haven't already. Check out the VIP bundles in there. They're always discounted for the VIPs. Those who are in my monthly kit subscriptions, I have two of them, Club Couture and the Comfy Nest one. Both of those, what I've started doing is people who are in those two groups who buy a VIP bundle, they're getting little extra treats this month in the bundles. They're getting two extra things in their bundle. So there's like an extra thank you to you guys for being part of the monthly kits. Um, the other thing is um, if you need to shop, if you just want to shop the site, I have the link for that. And I gave somebody asked, who was it that asked me for my Amazon link for, I'm not sure which craft supply you're looking for in the Amazon link, but I gave you that too. All right. So keep coming back for my lives. I'm going to put my live schedule. I'm going to try to post it in the morning. Um, my live schedule for the day. If I'm going live, you'll see a post in the morning saying I'm going live and here's the time. And that will tell you what time. Then you can come back and watch the live. Every time you come back, I'll be adding names to this and then drawing um, once or twice a month to send somebody a bigger prize pack of more goodies for Taco Tour. All right, you guys, have a beautiful, blessed day. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you next time.